and oh, it's, it's just so right. Do I need instant access to my quality setting? No, no one should. This just feels so good. <laughs> but that was so good. Oh, that was so good. Okay, so I guess I'll be doing that uh, unboxing again. So, <laughs> I, my my camera just died on me there and it's, oh, is it still recording? No, it is recording. Okay, 4K, wrong memory card, watch out about this. So, I sold my D810, sorry, my D810. I bought the D700, it's malfunctioning. eBay issues. I've gone to eBay again, I'd have bought something which I really shouldn't have. Um, my, uh, th this is something which is very much, I'm lying to my wife, <laughs> I'm lying to a lot of people about this one, because I've just spent two and a half thousand pounds on a second-hand camera you haven't got to the best bit yet it's got 256,000 photo actuations it's flaps already on it whoa the interesting thing is, though that's considered Effectively only half its life because once I go through this da, 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 Through the packaging Looky 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 what I got The Nikon Beast of a camera the ultra super hardcore mega pro double pro we'll, we'll go triple pro 16 megapixels, 11 frames a second, full frame, pro body, ah, uh, camera, ah, uh, lo lots of love going on here. Let's, let's have some more looks at it. Mm, okay, hoping this, this is working. Oh, I'm going to need a bit more coffee. Mmm. So I've gone and got myself uh, the Nikon uh, D4. It's a couple of years old, that's for sure. It is several generations up from the Nikon D700. Um, the D700 is a camera with a sensor that I love. And oh, it's, it's just so right. But already with the D4, I'm seeing a way they can improve the D4. The D700, foc stop face focusing. D700, the size of these buttons, I'll put this upside down so you can see. If we put them side by side, the D4 buttons seem a lot of it smaller. They totally are. And it's weird because there, stop face focusing. There's a lot of like area real estate. What it was called, back of screen real estate that they could have, but yet the buttons are quite small. And the difference is millimeters. That that's all I'm talking about. It is a couple of millimeters. Now this, this being a pro bro, a pro brody, a pro brody. Um means that I'm going to have to completely rethink how I use the settings because uh, on the top it's got ridiculous things um, but frankly I would say the D700's got ridiculous things as well so let's let's start here on like D700 on the top we've got white balance do I need quick access, instant access to white balance? No, you shoot raw all the time. Quality. Do I need instant access to my quality setting? No. No one should. That should be somewhere deep within the menus as not important. Quality should always just be raw. When you're buying a professional camera. 
this one takes it the next step. So, ISO, which is a fairly important thing to change, is just a teeny tiny button down here. And it's, and it's like softly indented in there, beside quality and white balance. So, the stuff which was on the top of the Nikon D700 is now soft indents right where my face is going to be. Um, that's confusing. That's, that's a real uh, confusing one for me. Why, why? Okay, take away quality, take away white balance. You should have enough balls to say that your camera's auto white balance will be good enough or have a white balance setting where it's deep within the camera. I'm trying to see if my, what is my Panasonic, no, what's this one? This, yeah, my, um, yeah, my Fuji S5 Pro as well, same thing, white balance quality, but ISO, ISO, quite important, um, up at the top there. Okay, so next thing, next thing that I need to uh, relearn is this one, to open the battery compartment, open there, and then boing! And I've got no memory cards. That's fine, that's fine. I shall find one. What's this? 30 megabytes a second. So this also takes XQD, QXD, the, the other memory card. Um, which I don't have one of. Uh, and if I did, I don't have a memory card reader. I think whenever these were first sent out to people, they were delivered with XQD card readers so that you could stick into your into your camera. But but, but my packaging didn't come with one, so so that's that's not very helpful. However, if you did have an XQD, you can have it in here. And then you can actually transfer the files from your XQD to your compact flash uh, uh, memory card in camera and then put it into your computer um, afterwards. Now, the funny thing is, I've already packaged up the, the battery, but it, it's, this is actually smaller than the D700 when the D700 has the additional uh, battery pack. So this is actually, although it's the pro body, it's more compact in in terms of its mass compared to a D700 or or for that matter a D800 D810 um, with the additional battery packs that is a fact. However, importantly, what I need to do is get a lens on this and let's feel let's let's feel the, the sexiness of oh I'm I, I'm I'm getting ready for this. I think I think I can un un 4K this now. Okay, non 4K. You notice it goes a little bit wider. Panasonic. That's a that's an issue that I'm gonna bring up in the future. Okay, let's go. On the top screen, lots of good information. We've got an exposure um, bar thing, uh, exposure meter as well. I like that. We also have a, a rem. A rem. We don't have that on any of my other cameras. A rem which is the remaining number of photos you can take on your memory card. I am liking that. That's not important. What we want to hear, what we want to hear is not single frames a second. Let's see, here it is. Continuous high. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need to, need to prepare before I do this. This is gonna be good. Without a doubt, this just feels so good. <laughs> I was, I was so, wait, sorry, sorry, back to the point. Here, let's hear, I, I think it's, I've got it on AFS single, no, uh, autofocus single, and I need to get it so it's uh, not auto, um, but a single point. Get it focused, right, I'll hold AF on. Let's hear it. This should be 11 frames a second. Oh, 
that was so good. That was so good. That was so good. Oh. Oh, that was good. Oh. I have absolutely no need for a camera that can do 11 frames a second. But that was so good. That, that was... I feel good. I, 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 in that time there, I have just taken 79 photos. It's currently processing them all. Uh, I think it's in my at 20. Is that number 30? 40 is this? I think it's a 6. It's 4,928 pixels by 3,280 pixels. Uh, that is the, the width there. Oh, that's... I was good, right, I, I'm, I just need to format the card, I just need to do that again. So I'm going to format the card by pressing the two buttons. That's so good that you can just do that. Hold format, and I'll do that again uh, and see how many photos we can get in one burst again. So here, let's see if you can see. Oh, that was good. That was good. What was that? What was that? It's going to tell me in a wee while. It's literally still counting the photos that it's just taken. Ah, oh, so good. Oh, and so, mixed with the... Uh, this is a really well-weighted combo here. The, the Nikon D4 and the unbelievably huge monster that is the Tamron... 15 to 30 millimeter f 2.8 VC USD ultrasonic ultra silent drive um feels this, this is like well balanced well weighted however what we need to do is go weight Let, let's find out how incredibly heavy this is but before we go just let you know that was 68 photos done in one burst at 11 frames a second, so that's like five and a bit seconds of that. Let's hear it again. Oh, oh, right. Well, does that? Let's 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 have the giggle. Let's have the giggle. Let's go. It's got it's got quiet. It's got quiet. Let's let's hear how <laughs> how quiet this is. And if we compare that to single, I would actually say that there is a definite volume difference, but what you're going from is like super loud to just loud. Loud and irritating. So you go from a loud bang to Slightly less, but still loud, irritating noise. Oh, ne oh next, irritating sound we need to see. If we put, have it in live view, live view, and we take a photo. Now, I, you've heard me in previous videos talk about how sometimes in live view, when you take a photo, it sounds disgusting. Let's see how this one sounds. So it's in live view. Take a photo of my face. That sounds quiet though. It's really quiet. So the idea is the quiet mode is you press it. No. Oh, I'm still in quiet. Oh, I'm in quiet mode while in live view. That's interesting. Okay, let's go to live view. Hi. Nice. <laughs> live view high frames a second. Live view single. Let's hear the sound that this makes. That's, that's quite a pleasing sound. That's quite a pleasing sound. So yeah, so like, we will get into all the lens, the sensor specs and all that kind of stuff in a future video, but in terms of ergonomics, feel, 
its mass and its shape and its combination with an incredibly fat lens um, is very pleasing at the moment, as is its shutter sound as long as noise isn't an issue. <laughs> if you enjoy a strong shutter, then this has definitely got one. And uh, its shutter sound in, in live view is a pleasant sound. I am pleased with that sound. Okay, so let's go. Oh, one slight weird thing I've just seen. If I have live view video, I can still take a photo. Still sounds good. However, live view video, it's telling me the amount of time which I can take a video for, maximum 20 minutes. That's it. Just one, once you've done 20 minutes, that's, that's it stopped. That's just 20 minutes. So the most, I think that's, I don't know whether there's been a firmware upware that's, it's firmware upware. Firmware upware update that maybe I sorted that out or maybe that was a thing which they had just to stop potential sensor overheating kind of issues because um, this does full HD at 1080p at 60 frames a second BOOM! I think DISASTER! Totally wrong! It doesn't do that <laughs> it does full HD at 30 frames a second so Full HD, 30 frames a second, can only do 20 minutes. It's not a movie camera, it's not a film camera, this is a photo camera. We have to be going out and taking some photos to really review this and get, get used to it. Even though it's got mic in, headphones, HDMI, out sections, oh those rubber tabs. The, remember, this is a camera which has taken 250,000 photos and probably by the end of this review 251,000 photos and it's going fantastic. There's also a, a mic on the back for doing a voice recording thing with your photos. I don't know how this comes up however this for my work could be very useful if I wasn't already doing video, like my, my work is property photography and I go around doing photography but I also do videos and I also do floor plans where I'll walk around uh, measuring up the place uh, in the floor plan. Um, but it may be the case of, hey, there's the same Dom, go out to five different properties today, take photos. Might be cool to, in the first photo, if I take a photo, voice thing, this is one Main Street Kirkliston. I don't, I don't press stop again. I think that's it. Not 100% sure. Then that might be handy for me. Then I take the next 10 photos and at least whenever I'm uploading them to Lightroom, I get a voice file. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Don't know how useful that is. But also at the same time, I could very simply take a quick live view, press record going, this is one Main Street Curry, Edinburgh. Done. You know, that, stop video, or take a photo, and that, that's your photo taken. So I, th that, so effectively, at the bottom, quality, pointless. White balance, pretty pointless. Microphone, pointless, I think. I think, from my opinion. Let me know if you find these incredibly useful down there. But yeah, so that's the weird thing. Up at the top, bracketing. Like you need a specific button for bracketing. I don't think so. That can be, I think that is something which could very easily be used as something, like I've got bracketing, I like bracketing, I've got it on the Nikon D700, but I've got it as, uh, I've, I've allocated it to a random button, like the preview button here, and it's not taking up space up here. So I can go up at the top and press this and then rotate the buttons. And now I've got like nine photos at one stop difference kind of photo thing. And that will be really helpful for going. Brilliant. It's taking photos all at different exposures there. Just what I need. Um, but I can allocate that to a random button which isn't really used. 
This, on the other hand, it's a whole big bottom. Don't, don't really need to see the need of that. There's also, it, it, it is just bizarre. It is just bizarre. The Nikon D700, two generations younger. The D-pad here is substantially bigger than the D-pad here, which is, again, you have a lot of, you have a lot of space for this, especially when this is an eight-point maneuverable uh, thing, cursor, and you've got in the centre a, an important button for selecting things. Why so small? Expand your buttons, expand your buttons. Like the Fuji S5 Pro, look at the Look at the size, diff can we get them close together? Look at the size difference of the Fujis compared to the D7, D1, what is this, D4s. That's how big it's meant to be. And this one doesn't even have a central button to express anything. Um, but otherwise, uh, let's just forget all of that by doing what we all want to do again. Oh, and that's, that's, oh, that's my memory card spent, <laughs> not just the memory card. Right, let's go weigh this. Okay, so if we um, clean my, my wing skills, and we stick on everything here, so this is the D4, the SB900, and the Tamron 15 to 30. Oh, a smidgen in an absolute smidgen under three kilograms. Hmm. So that's lighter than the D700 plus extra battery pack and flash and all that. Huh. That's a surprising result. So this is so much lighter, so much better for my spine. Now, there's one thing I'll do. It, I'm doing it in a separate video as well, but I'll stick this into my introduction video that I've actually just noticed. In low light performance, there's a slight benefit to the D700 compared to the D4. If you notice, and also be careful, I think this is also on the Nikon D500 which has just been released, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, you'll notice around here, there's a logo. That's, that's it, on the Nikon D700. Around here you'll notice there's a light which helps in certain situations such as dark situations. And it, this clearly isn't dark enough. I'm going to close the blinds. Damn it. Ah, that's because I turned it off. I turned it off in a previous video. There you go. So with this, we have the Nikon flashlight, effectively, if you have an AFS setting. Hold on, I'm just good. Yeah, if you have an AFS, we have we have a helpful addition of the light. Certainly good for close focusing stuff, or if you're in a very large very long, very dark tunnel, and you're like, oh no, we didn't know we are going to be walking down this tunnel, and there's monsters chasing us, and our, we, we don't have torches, what can we do? Oh, hold on, my Nikon D4 is just going to take photos. Um, that, that, it, it can't focus. It's, stop that. Damn it. See? Struggling to focus. Can't focus. See? Hunting. Hunting. Brilliant example. I'm going to show you in another video and later on, but like, totally struggles to focus. Meanwhile, with this one, the D700, uh, still, my, still my fave. Still my favourite.